from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Dave Lawler, Johnny, over at Shirley Mutual and Trust Company. Oh, hi, Dave. Long time. Yeah, I know. Listen, do you own a pair of dark sunglasses and some real loud sports shirts? Mine are so loud I have to keep them in a soundproof drawer. Great. But where you'll be at this time tomorrow, nobody will give them a second look. Oh? Like where? Well, according to the travel folders, it's, quote, the land where the summer spends the winter, unquote. In other words... Palm Springs, California. Dave, you're on. Good. But don't forget, this can be pretty expensive for your company. Oh, more than you know, Johnny. 75,000 hard cash. Ah, we. Oui. Unless you're able to prove the bracelet Dan Galloway gave to his child bride wasn't really stolen. For a trip to Palm Springs at this time of year, I think I could prove anything. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Surety Mutual and Trust Company, Franklin Building, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the suntan oil matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, $197.40. Airline fare and incidentals, Hartford to Palm Springs, California. I registered at La Casa de Paz on South Palm Canyon Drive, changed into casual clothes, and sauntered over to police headquarters. Detective Sergeant Lacey was about to leave for lunch, so I went along with him. Yeah, Dollar, you'd be surprised at how much stuff is lost in this town during the course of just one season. The report we got says it was stolen, Sergeant. Oh, sure, sure. But I doubt it. A $75,000 bracelet, just five days old? That'd be a little careless of the lady, wouldn't it? Well, if you were married to one of the biggest wildcatters in the oil business, maybe you could afford to be careless. What about Dan Galloway? Didn't you say he was drilling somewhere around here? About 80 miles south in the middle of the desert down by Salton Sea. Salton Sea. Oh, that's really a big inland lake that lies way down below sea level, isn't it? Want to bring me a check, Dottie? 245 feet below sea level, Dollar. There's oil there? Dan Galloway figures it this way. One of the most successful new fields that's been worked in years is deep under the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Louisiana. There are a lot of salt domes down there, and underneath them are big pools of oil. Millions of barrels. So, why not under the Salton Sea, which is all salt deposits? Who knows? Maybe he has something. Anybody else drilling down there? Uh, Just Galloway. Who else needs it? I mean, any more than he does. Well, does he? All yours, Dottie. How would I know Galloway needs it? But there has been talk around, you know. But if he's hard up, how could he afford that fancy bracelet last week? Yeah, or the uh, snazzy Italian sports car the week before that. I don't know either, darling. What about his wife? Oh, 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 that Roberta. What a doll. And in 3D, if you know what I mean, how an old coot like him could ever latch onto a pretty little chick like her? I take it Roberta's somewhat younger than her husband. Oh, not more than 35, 40 years. Oh, I see. How long have they been married? Mm, two, maybe three years. They're down in Dallas, I think it was. She's a Texas girl. Well, is it working out? I mean, are they happy? There's talk about that, too. What kind of talk? Oh, it's really just small-town gossip for the most part. Uh, ever hear of Sonny Wyman? Wyman? No. Well, Sonny's around Roberta's age. One of those kids who came up from nothing, but all the time knew exactly where he was going. You know, made a point of meeting the right people, shaking the right hands. Real nice kid, too. Uh, what's he do? Oh, uh, when the season's over here, he works Pasadena, Beverly Hills, and L.A. Always has something that'll intrigue his wealthy friends. Uh, this season, it's Italian sports cars. Uh, Cosmo Romas, I think they are. And he's the one who sold the Galloways theirs, huh? Uh, he sold Roberta hers. Any angle there in connection with the bracelet? Huh? There is. You let me know. Well, if there isn't, what have you been working up to? Well, actually, nothing. You see, I still believe it was lost. <laughs> Expense account item two, $35 for rental of a drive-your-own car. I found the Galloway place about two miles out north and east of town. As I parked in the broad U-shaped driveway, I noticed a low, shiny, suntan-colored sports car standing in the shade of a date palm back by the garage. 
I started over to take a look at it. But the front door of the house opened, a Filipino boy appeared, took my name, and showed me into the living room. Through the solid wall of picture windows, I could see that the whole place was built around a kidney-shaped swimming pool. Huh. Mighty inviting. And so was Roberta, Mrs. Galloway, when she stepped into the room a minute or two later. Hi there, Mr. Dollar. My, it's nice of you to come all the way out here. Yeah, Sergeant Lacey was right. Roberta was a living doll. 22 or 3, trim, petite, and with a figure that... Well, let's not go into that. She said it would be more comfortable out on the lanai beside the pool. I just wish there was something I could tell you about that bracelet that had helped you find it, Mr. Dollar, but... Well, it just must have been stolen. Well, it makes no difference insofar as your claim is concerned, Mrs. Galloway. The company will still have to pay up, you know, unless, of course, it's found. Oh, I know that. How do you go about your investigation? I mean, uh, do you offer a reward or something? Uh, usually, yes. Uh, of course, it depends on... How much have they offered for my bracelet? Well, frankly, I haven't checked on that yet. But now, Mrs. How Galloway... How much would you guess, Johnny? Well, claim this size, probably somewhere between 10 and 30 percent. The... What's the matter, Johnny? Your ear's out a mile. Uh, nothing, I... I just thought I heard... Now, that's funny. I didn't hear a thing. But I had. Quick footsteps somewhere in the house. Then a door opened and closed. Then a few seconds later, the unmistakable growl of a high-powered engine thundering out through twin straight pipes. Oh, that. Probably some hot rod fan in the neighborhood just drove by. Aren't they She all... prattled on for another hour or so and again asked about possibilities of a reward for her bracelet. But so far as helpful information was concerned, she came up with nothing. So I excused myself and drove back to town. I wanted to talk to the driver of that sports car. I also wanted to check with Wilhoyt Van Hook, the jeweler who had sold the bracelet. I found his shop on Palm Canyon Drive, a small place, but very ultra-ultra. As I was about to enter the door... Hey, Mr. Dollar, got a minute? Oh, yeah, sure, two or three minutes. And I, uh, I like your car. Mr. Wyman, isn't it? That's right. How'd you know? How'd you know mine? Yeah, real cloak and dagger stuff, huh? You, uh, you knew I was out at Berta's house, didn't you? Well, it seemed pretty obvious when I heard you hot-footed for the door and then heard this pint-sized monster of yours barrel off. Hey, you wouldn't like to buy a Cosmo Roma, would you? It's a real dilly. Oh, I'd like nothing better, but I'm out here on a job. Yeah, I know. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, you know anything that'll help me? Not much, I'm afraid. But I'll be glad to tell you anything I can. You going in to see Willie? Willie? Yeah, you know, Will Hoyt Van Hook, the jeweler. I was, yeah. Why? Do you know him? Know him? I sold him one of these. One exactly like mine. And we're both going to be in the rally they're holding next Sunday. You ever see a good sports car race? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Well, we'll soon fix that. And look, uh, after you've talked to Willie, if you want to go down to where Dan Galloway is drilling his new well, I'll be glad to give you a lift. Good idea. But I don't want to take you out of your way. Oh, not at all. I was going that way anyhow. Besides, uh... I thought it might give us a chance to talk a little. Sure, why not? Why not? With a name like Wilhoyt Van Hook, I expected... Well, I don't know what I expected. As it turned out, he was a smartly dressed chap of about 40, tall and slim, blonde hair and quick blue eyes, an alert mind. I told him why I was in Palm Springs, showed him my credentials, and he immediately offered full cooperation. No, here we are, Mr. Dollar. Here's a copy of the appraisal. A duplicate of the statement I sent Dan Galloway. And here, yes, here's a sketch of the bracelet. Ah, yeah, very good. Diamonds here, emeralds, and the mounting is yellow gold. Hand worked, all of it. Mm hmm. One thing I can't help wondering about, Mr. Van Hook. Yes? Isn't a $75,000 bracelet a bit unusual for a shop in a resort town? As a matter of fact, it is. As you can see, I specialize in rare and exclusive sort of things. But very little over, say, ten or $12,000. Then the Galloway bracelet was an exception. Yes. After Dan told me what he had in mind to give to his wife, I had some sent over from Pasadena and Los Angeles by wholesalers with whom I do business. You know, had him shipped down on consignment. He liked one, and that was that. I see. Mr. Dollar, I wouldn't want this to go any farther, of course. But after all, jewelers and insurance companies are... Well, our businesses are pretty well tied together, at least on occasion. Yes, unfortunately. But what are you getting at? I'll tell you. 
Two days after the bracelet was delivered, one morning, just as I was opening up, Dan came in here. So? He was ill at ease, looked worried. He said he had to have some cash quickly. He asked if I could possibly refund his money. Oh? Did you? No, because I couldn't. Things have been rather slow for me this season. Quite frankly, I'd used all I'd made on the bracelet to pay up some old bills. I told him as much and that I was sorry, but I just couldn't help him. Did Galloway say why he had to have that much cash right away? Yes. Well? I don't know much about oil drilling, but as I understand it, his test well is down some 400 feet further than he'd planned on going. And the day before he came in here, something on his rig had broken loose and left him with a highly expensive repair job before he could proceed any further. Apparently, it was all very serious and very expensive. Hmm. Strange, his wife didn't seem to be bothered. I just talked to her. Berta? <laughs> Believe me, Mr. Dollar, she wouldn't be. In fact, I doubt if she even knows. Oh? Figure it out for yourself. A man of nearly 60 who has to give bracelets and fancy cars to his wife to keep up her interest. Well, you'd hardly expect him to tell her that kind of news, now would you? No, I suppose not. Especially if he's worried about the competition. And if you ask me, he has competition. If only he could see it. That suntan and chrome Cosmoroma was all Sonny Wyman claimed it was. It purred like a kitten and performed beautifully. But I was more interested at the moment in what Sonny wanted to talk about. Johnny, I'm going to be perfectly blunt with you. I'll go along with that. Out at the house a while ago, I felt pretty foolish when you arrived and Berta insisted I hide until she could get you out on the lanai. Did she have any particular reason? Well, you see, we know that... Well, there's some talk going around about Berta and me. Any truth in it, Sonny? A little, I guess. You saw her. Oh, yeah? I mean, there's nothing serious between us. It's just that... Well, with Dan away so much of the time, we, uh... Well, we have fun together. Yeah, sure. Now, what about the bracelet? You mean who might have stolen it? That's the general idea. I don't know. I have no idea. That, uh, sound funny to you? Should it? Well, after all, Dan and Berta keeping their house open to everybody, people in to swim, play badminton, cocktails, barbecues. I guess half the population of Palm Springs has been there at one time or another. And even if it weren't an invited guest, why, it'd be simple for someone to just sneak in and walk off with it. Providing, of course, they knew where it was kept. Well, yeah, someone who was close enough to... Well, yeah, I, uh... I heard uh, Berta ask you about a reward for it. You think a big enough reward would turn it up? I would think so. I understand that stolen jewelry brings about uh, 20 cents on the dollar. Sometimes it brings 20 cents. Sometimes 20 years. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I uh, j just wonder. How's the car business doing, Sonny? Oh, great, great. It's really one of the reasons I'm driving out this way. Oh, a prospect? An oil-rich Indian or a well-to-do prairie dog? <laughs> Hardly. No, I told you we were having a sports car rally on Sunday. Well, being the promoter, so to speak, I'm going down to check the course. If you're still around, you ought to come. Oh, well, maybe I will. Having some good events, too. Willie Van Hook and I are running a match race. He's quite a bug, you know. And ever since I sold him the twin to this job, he's been working it over. Special carburetor, racing cams, everything. And no wonder I can't afford this kind of stuff. Oh, man, you'd be amazed at the of, amount of money that changes hands. Hey, wait a minute, Sonny. Isn't that an oil rig over there? Uh, yeah, Dan Galloway's. The rig itself's about uh, 50 feet out in the lake. The shack or office or whatever you want to call it's over the other way. You see, about a quarter of a mile beyond those Joshua trees, I'll drive you over. He did. There was an old car parked near the shack, so we figured Dan Galloway must be inside. Sonny Wyman dropped me in front of it, then took off in a cloud of dust and exhaust gas. I picked my way between the cactus plants, opened the door without knocking, and barged right in. Mr., uh... Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, no use asking. If Mr. Galloway is here, I can see he isn't. No, he isn't. Is it all right if I wait? I'm Johnny Dollar. I'm Mrs. Galloway, Mr. Dollar. Huh? Hell, that is, I'm the first Mrs. Galloway. The former. The one who scrimped and saved while Dan was booming around every oil field all over the country trying to make his score. I'm the forgotten Mrs. Galloway. Oh, I, uh, well, I'm sorry. Are you expecting him back soon? <laughs> who knows? I've been waiting here three hours. But I'll wait three days if I have to. Promises, that's all, promises. 
What do you mean, Mrs. Galloway? After working to help him the way I did for all those years, and then to be tossed over for somebody else who never did a lick of work in her life. Oh, sure. Give me anything I want if I let him free. So what have I got? Promises. Well, I, I'm sorry. But getting all upset isn't going to help. Well, wouldn't you be upset if you had more than $18,000 in back alimony coming to you? And with them living like royalty? Oh, I see. Well, he's not going to keep on getting away with it. That's why I'm here. Well, now that gun in your handbag isn't the what? answer, I'm afraid. How'd you know? I've seen that kind of bulge in a handbag before. You really have ideas about using it on him? Well? Well, I... Oh, I don't know. I... There are times when I feel as though killing would be too good for him. Then there are other times when... Oh, I, I don't know. Well, here, better let me no. have it. No, leave me alone. Well, I'm not going to sit here and try no. to make sense with somebody as upset as you are who has a gun. Well, how would you feel? What would you do if you were me? How should I know? But killing him isn't the answer. Isn't it? Or sitting here shouting at me. Who are you anyway? What are you doing here? I came out here to see your husband, your ex-husband, on business. What kind of business? A friend drove me out here and figured Dan would drive me back. But since he isn't around, there's no point of my staying here. Or you either. Well, maybe you aren't You have a car, so you and I are driving back to Palm Springs. I'm not leaving here till I see Dan. Until I get some money from him. Or see him dead. Maybe he's at the well. All right. Maybe he is over there. Now, come on. Why I took this on, I didn't know. But I couldn't leave that slightly frantic woman sitting there, waiting, with murder in her heart. For all I knew, she'd murdered Dan already. Better inspect the gun later. The road down toward the oil rig was just a pair of ruts in the desert sand. Then just as we cut in between some yucca plants and a wind-blown Joshua tree, I slammed on the brakes. <laughs> there, in the middle of the trail, lay a man's body, crushed and twisted. Dan Galloway had been carefully, repeatedly, run over by a car. Expense account item three, one dollar nineteen cents for a quick phone call to Sergeant Lacey in Palm Springs and smelling salts and a bromide for Florida, the ex Mrs. Galloway. Then I dropped her off at the Galloway house. She and Roberta ended up consoling each other while I huddled with Lacey in his office at headquarters. Some of the boys are still out there, Dollar, checking tire prints, taking pictures, and so on. No clue as to who ran Galloway down? Not yet. Looked to me as though Galloway stepped out of his own car to see whoever had pulled up in the other and was run down for his trouble. The car that did it ran around in a circle over and over him. Any suspects, Sergeant? You found his ex-wife, Flora, waiting for him in the field office, you said. That's right. And she was pretty nervous, on edge, you said. So? Also, she was carrying a gun. Oh, oh now, wait a minute. Uh, any reason why she couldn't have run him down earlier, then gone back and just waited for somebody like you to come along? Somebody with whom she could then discover the body? Only one hitch. You told me yourself, Dollar, that she was pretty insistent about your going over there to look for Gannon. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, Sergeant, you're off on the wrong foot. Why? Because of the tracks left by the killer's car, they didn't match the tires on Flora's car. You checked? I checked. And if I were you, I'd have your boys find out whose car did make those tracks. I'm way ahead of you. Well, if you know, then what do you... Hey, wait a second. Yeah? Levine, Sergeant. I got news for you. Hey, listen to this, Dollar. About those tire tracks at the scene of the killing. Well, right on cue. They're the, the same make and size as the tires on Sonny Wyman's Cosmo Roma. You sure? I told you it's a scene. I thought it was a sports car by the small size of the circle the tracks made. Yeah? And knowing the feeling between Wyman and Galloway, I went right over to his place. Nice, clean tracks all over. And they match. You holding Wyman? Oh, well, I don't know where he is, Sergeant. He wasn't at his place, and there was no answer to the phone at his showroom. Well, then get after him. Put out a flash on him. With that car, he shouldn't be too hard to find. Let me know when he's picked up. Yes, sir. What do you think, Sergeant? You know something, Dollar? I have a notion that when we find Sonny Wyman, we'll also find out what happened to that bracelet. Yeah, could be. One thing was certain. Dan Galloway could no longer be suspect in the case. But Roberta? Why not? Maybe she did know that Dan had run out of money. Maybe that's why she was so interested in the amount of reward for the bracelet. And what about Sonny Wyman? Well, it looked bad. A smart young opportunist out for the fast buck. And, of course, close to Galloway's wife. Anything he could do to hurt Galloway would help him. And now these tire tracks, the one solid clue to Galloway's killer. Sergeant Lacey and I drove out to the Galloway house. I know, Johnny. I haven't seen Sonny since he left here this afternoon. That's when you were here. He didn't call up? Why should he call up? 
Why shouldn't he call Roberta if he'd heard that Dan was killed? Now you listen here, Mr. Dollar. If you're trying to trick me into saying something about Sonny having anything to do with Dan's death, you're wasting your time. And what's more... Pardon me. Hello? Oh, yes. Just a minute. For you, Sergeant Lacey. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yes? Yes, when? Yeah, I see. Okay, Levine, thanks. Has he found Sonny Wyman? He sure has. And if you want to see him, you'll have to go to the coroner's office. What? Oh, no. Yeah, that souped-up car of his. A couple of miles out of town. Ran off a curve and over a hundred-foot bank. Within minutes, Lacey and I were at the scene of the accident, looking things over with the help of flashlights. Yeah, he must have been really burning up the road to spin and roll this far off the highway. But surely he must have been familiar with that curve. Oh, sure. He knew these roads around here as well as anybody in the county. Tires still in one piece, too. And these sport cars usually corner pretty well. Well, this one didn't. Hey, Lacey, look here. Yeah? This left rear fender. Looks to me like this car was sideswiped. Hey, you're right. Rolling over never make a long crease like that. Uh-huh. No, no, wait. If another car sideswiped him, there'd be paint on this fender. Paint from the other car. Sergeant, you're absolutely right. And since there's none here... Sergeant, you're absolutely wrong. How far to the nearest filling station? What? I want to make a couple of calls to some wholesale jewelers in Pasadena and Los Angeles. Right now, in the middle of the night? Right now. Wholesale jewelers? <laughs> Expense account item four, eleven dollars and ninety cents. Phone calls to Pasadena and L.A. The third call yielded Mr. Alfred Mencken of Mencken Imports Incorporated, who was pretty cheerful about having been gotten out of bed. It's quite all right, Mr. Dollar. Now that I'm up, I'm wide awake almost. Well, I hate to throw something like this at you in the middle of the night, Mr. Mencken, but tell me, please, did you ship a diamond and emerald bracelet to Will Hoyt Van Hook in Palm Springs within the past few weeks? Why, yes, Mr. Dollar. Oh, as a matter of fact, I sent him three. That was two weeks ago, and he returned them all. Returned them? When? Well, two of them the day after he got them. But the third one he kept for a while. I got it back just last Thursday. Now, I don't know if that means anything to you. You bet it does. Thanks very much. Lacey and I piled into one squad car, four patrolmen in another. It was several miles out to the little ranch where Van Hook lived, and Lacey and I chewed it over as we drove along. It don't hold out on me, Johnny. What if it made you think a Willie Van Hook is the one who drove Sonny Wyman off the road? Well, apparently there was no paint on that fender from the car that sideswiped him. Actually, there was. Holy... Of course. Van Hook's car is exactly the same color as Sonny's. Another thing. The car that ran down Galloway, like the one Sonny drove, even down to the tires, but not necessarily the same car. Plus the fact I couldn't help wondering about Van Hook all along. Yeah, but why? In a job like mine, you have to wonder about everybody connected with a case. Anything particular about Van Hook? Well, he told me that he'd use the money he got from Galloway to pay off some overdue bills. And yet, a few weeks ago, he was able to buy an $8,000 sports car. It ties up, Dollar. It all ties up. But how did Sonny Wyman figure in it? Oh, Sonny was a fellow who lived by his wits. He may have reached the same conclusion about Van Hook that I did. He may have had an idea for latching on to the reward money. He mentioned the matter of reward to me a couple of times. Or he may have had ideas for blackmailing Van Hook. Another thing. Van Hook saw me drive away from his shop in Sonny's car. That meant he had to act fast. Get rid of Galloway, who'd given him back the bracelet, and, of course, take Sonny out of the picture, too. Yeah, it all seems to head up very nicely. And when we face Van Hook... But, well, there's his place now. Yeah, here's his driveway. Well, either he's skipped out or he's asleep... No lights on in the place. Well, if you ask me, he's far... No, no, wait. Yeah? The third window on the right. The blind was pulled away for a second or two. Well, then let's get out of this car. We're sitting ducks in here. Well, how about it, Sergeant? What do we do? You boys split up. Cover the back and sides of the house. He's in there? Yeah. Okay, boys. Come on. All right. Johnny, maybe you better keep out of this. Are you kidding? I'm... Hey, listen. That car door, I'm sure of it. Yeah, I know. Holy... What's he up to? Gonna lock himself in and take the monoxide route? Come on. Are there back doors in that garage? Not that I know of. Here, wait a minute. Van Hook! This is the police! We've got men all around this place! Turn off that engine and come out of there with your hands over your head! Don't be a fool, Van Hook! You haven't got a chance! Come out of that garage and help! Hey, did you see 
see that? He drove right through the door of his garage. Come on, Lacey, the car. Get after him, you guys. Get moving. Yeah, come on, boys. Swiping habit. See what he did to that other patrol car? Yeah, they're okay. They're off and tailing us. Come on, step on it, Lacey. This is one time we ought to have a Cosmo Roma. Well, maybe he can outrun us, but with two cars on his tail, he may get careless, take chances. If so, yeah, hang on. Oh! Lacey, you could qualify for some of those road races yourself. That guy's out of his head. Main highway like this, full of trucks and trailers. Oh, don't worry about those guys. Those interstate truckers will give you a clear road after them. They're the best drivers in the country. Come on, hit your siren. You're right. Hey, see, I told you those guys would give you the road. Holy... Look! The trailer in front of him! And the oncoming truck! Van Hook's trying to squeeze through! Pull up! Pull up, I will... Well, he squeezed through, all right. Squeeze right through the pearly gates. Expense account item five thirty eight dollars seventy five cents room two meals and valet service at the Casa de Paz. Item six one hundred ninety one dollars and sixty cents airfare and incidentals Palm Springs California back to Hartford. Expense account total four hundred seventy four dollars eighty four cents. Remarks. Well, justice is done in pretty strange ways sometimes. Kind of makes you think. Maybe it pays to tread the straight and narrow, doesn't it? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, international intrigue. A beautiful girl and a very clever chemist. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is written by Paul Franklin and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Barbara Eiler, Paula Winslow, Forrest Lewis, Frank Nelson, Sam Edwards, Austin Green, and Shep Mencken. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.